like to share a sermon with you, which is called How to Arrive. Okay, so let's see how much you guys remember the Bible and how much you are paying attention. So who can tell me one of the greatest commandments? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, uh, then should I give him the mic or oh, can you just shut it out? Tennis racket, not tennis racket, but people racket and have the ball go into the cups. 
But usually, what the peers did when somebody scores something, they were just like, whatever, you score that, I score this. But lately, he noticed when somebody has a score, everybody's like cheering. So we'll just briefly watch our students. Oh. <laughs> yes, so you can see the peers cheering. You did a great job. We are encouraging each other. Now, I also wanted to hear about other people. So I asked my homework students, can you tell me some teachers that you are very sure they are good at showing love? So our high schoolers, who do you think as a teacher, this person shows a lot of love? You're participating too much. <laughs> Mothers on this side. Yes. Oh, Miss Joyce. Yes. One more person. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. But unfortunately, uh, we were, I was not in the list. Uh, <laughs> Kelly was in the list. I can't remember. But number one. Anybody can guess which teacher was number one okay. showing love? Teachers, and I wanted to hear from a few students. So, who can tell us 
A few students you think were in the top five list, they are very good at showing love. And people who haven't spoken, you can raise your hand, Grace. A student. You sure it was a student a long, long time ago now. A teacher. A student, yes. Who? Uh, Daniel, okay, now Daniel. They are in the higher grades. Eunice? Jesus. 
Jesus did. Now the question is, how did Jesus love us? How did he show his love for us? And this is the way he showed his love. I'll read it for you. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine and vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Are you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? You are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. So what you heard in the recording was, in my way, a modern way of what you would hear what Jesus heard when he was on the cross. So people were laughing at him, were pointing fingers at him, were spitting, were hitting him. So I was trying to enact that through the recording. And some of you felt sad, upset, lonely. And that's just a little bit of how Jesus was feeling at the time. But even though he could call all the angels, you know, come, just destroy them and kill them, you know, I don't want this, etc. He still bare that. Not only bare it, he said, Father, forgive me. They don't know what they are doing. Then, uh, to end the sermon today, the question is, then how do we love others? Because God told us to love others. It would be by loving as Jesus did. And how did he do it? He did it by forgiving others and by giving up his life for me and for you. I hope you can remember that and today and over the weekend, if you can try to forgive others and to give up something for them. Let's pray.